I actually think as a policy level, I just want to say, I think civilian oversight board might actually be the most important thing in, in of Absolutely. reform that are inside the context that we haven't sort of overturned the whole thing. And, you know, in New York City, uh, people should look this up. When David Dinkins proposed a modest form of this, there was a police riot, <laughs> like as in they rioted. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and Rudy and actually got, not, not, not to inter- the oral campaign at that right. rally. Uh, so, yeah. And I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but your what your story about David Dinkins just reminded me. I just read an article that the French police in France apparently have thrown off their helmets in an action of rage because they are against a ban on chemical weapons or something like that, or chokeholds. I think I can't remember. Yeah, no, they have, and 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 they're actually. Uh, th- well, this is a different dynamic in France. They're brawling with firefighters, so <laughs> they're they're still in a different <laughs> constellation than we are. But that being said, I, I you know I want to play a clip. Actually, we have of you making uh, some similar points in a really important and public way, um, and and about you know how these things actually happen, how you actually build power. And we're gonna play this clip because it's a really good clip. And then I'm actually wondering if you could connect that with another significant struggle that you've had on the city council, which is basically just trying to pay, have Amazon pay tax. But here is what I wanna share with some of you who may not know what happened. What did she do? The city council at that time was majority people of color, like me. And yet, I was the only no vote on that contract. We have to remember that, you know, what what builds the movement is not people who are in power that may look like you or me, but it's people who have shown through their actions that they are in solidarity with ordinary people and marginalized communities. So fantastic. And can you connect it with your fight with Amazon? I think that's a very important point you you brought up, Michael, because as Anna was saying earlier in the earlier segment that uh, ultimately the, uh, the fight against police violence and racism is tied to the system that creates the racism and police violence. And in order for that struggle to really blossom in in a serious way, in in a way that can actually uh, make, uh, not only win the kind of reforms like you mentioned, and and I totally agree with you that winning an independently elected community oversight board is a very, very important demand. And it's not going to be uh, easy to win by any means, but that is where this movement needs to go and this is an important moment which we should not squander um but at the end of the day it's like malcolm x said you know you can't have capitalism without racism and any system like capitalism which is meant you know the 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 goal of capitalism is to be uh, what it is right now it's not like capitalism is not working properly as some people might have us believe it's the goal of capitalism is to ensure that the vast majority of wealth remains in the hands of a very few at the top and the rest of us at the bottom, the hundreds of millions of working people, ordinary people, poor people, we are all, uh, you know, we are all the non-beneficiaries of the system. However, uh, capitalism has an inherent problem in keeping that kind of system in equilibrium because it's inherently a disequilibrium. So it requires that the rest of us who are at the bottom not be at the same level of oppression because then it's an immediate recipe for solidarity. It's a very clear cut angle for solidarity. And so it's in the interest of capitalism to inherently divide us along many factors, you know, divide us along race, divide us along gender and sexual orientation, divide us along national origin. So it's not a coincidence that the same system that has created this specific brutality against black community members is also the same system that originated from having carried out a genocide against the Native American population of the US. It's the same system that is deploying this brutal organization ICE and the border patrol against immigrants who are entering from other other, uh, countries. 
So it, it shows you that all of these different oppressions exist under capitalism, not because it's some unfortunate ju juxtaposition with other good features of the system or anything like that, but because the system needs to divide us on along those lines. And those divisions have to be sharp and those divisions have to be constantly reinforced because the idea of solidarity keeps popping up among those who are oppressed. And that, and to me, you know, of course, as a socialist, that's a message of uh, the tremendous confidence that that generates in my mind um, uh, for the working class, you know, confidence that they that we as a working class will reach the right conclusions. Because despite the absolutely uh, brutal divisions that are created in our society, and y yet every single time you see multiracial movements emerging uh, in every era. So right now, for example, the protests that broke out in Minneapolis and then have spread throughout the world obviously were led by the black and brown communities themselves who are facing the brunt of police violence and racism. But they are very much multiracial and working class in character. And uh, and and, it, and, it, and this discussion, you know, it would be remiss if we didn't also mention how incredibly important it is that the labor movement is beginning to play a role, but also all the, the role that the labor movement needs to continue to play. So just, just to mention some concrete examples that have been important and inspiring is this bus driver named Adam Birch, who also happens to be a member of the uh, Minneapolis Transit Workers Union and Socialist Alternative. He declared on the very first days of the protest that he is refusing as a bus driver and a union member to bus protesters to jail because an injury to one is an injury to all. That's the bedrock of the labor movement and that we, there is no prospect of winning racial justice if we don't have that kind of solidarity among the working class. And that led to the ATU president there, Ryan Timlin, helping to bring the international together in issuing a very strong statement. We had the Minneapolis teachers issue the statement, Minneapolis nurses. And right here in Seattle, there's something exciting happening. You know, the Seattle Police Officers Guild, which is a reactionary force, not, I mean, in, in our view, not part of the labor movement, has been affiliated with the Fraternal Order of the Police, which is very closely linked with Trump and the dangerous right wing. That has been part of our local AFL-CIO, local labor council. Now there's a real move, real push among rank and file and the leadership of many unions to push the Police Officers Guild out of our labor movement. And so the Seattle Educators Association and the union, UAW 4121, the union that represents graduate student workers at the University of Washington, which is a large public employer here, Though both those unions have overwhelmingly voted to kick the police officers guild out of the labor council. And that vote is going to be taken by the delegates of the council on Wednesday. So it is a very important vote and it go, needs to go beyond that. So it's important that, for example, the longshore workers here have declared that they're going to do a walkout on June, Juneteenth. So we need those actions to escalate. We need workplace actions. We need unionizing struggles of the warehouse workers at Amazon and you know much more than that to build the kind of solidarity that you're referring to absolutely yeah i love it i i only have one final question um because it's it's really inspiring to hear you speak as candidly as you do um about your beliefs your ideology you probably call yourself a socialist and i like that you really do emphasize the importance of labor in in pushing for real change in this country um, but there's no question that we also need uh leadership um, in, you know, various uh, congressional seats uh, on a local level with the city council. And I know that for you specifically, um, Amazon funded a pretty aggressive fight in order to get you um, out of the city council. Can you talk a little bit to the audience, maybe some um, young members of the audience who are thinking about uh, getting involved in politics, uh, what they can do to fight back against that system? Because I know how vicious it is. I've seen it with uh, some of the progressives who have attempted to get elected into Congress. Um, what kind of advice would you give to them? Right, and I'm sorry, I, I know the question was about Amazon and I reared off into no, it, the labor you did movement. It, you did it better, that, that was, a rare example of a politician making a question better by not answering it. <laughs> thank you. I, I appreciate that. But I will but I will connect you to Amazon and Anna. Thank you for reminding me. Last year, uh, so so just actually a little bit more background. In 2018, uh, on the heels of having won 
the historic $15 minimum wage and a whole host of renter rights victories, our movement was really gaining momentum uh, along, the, along the question of stopping the sweeps of homeless uh, neighbors, but also on the burning question of housing affordability, which has become completely untenable. And, and Seattle is hardly the only city. This is now a nationwide phenomenon of metropolitan areas of housing becoming completely unaffordable and gentrification, as you mentioned earlier. And so there was real momentum to tax for the Amazon tax, which is a tax on big businesses like Amazon, but not just Amazon, a very, very modest tax in order to generate annual funds so that we can have a major expansion of social housing. And I could not, I could not emphasize it enough. Social housing and rent control are extremely important uh, reforms that we need to win uh, because they will, th those, are, those are the kinds of demands, that those are the kinds of changes that will actually begin to make a dent in the racist gentrification that we have seen where the, and, and, it's, it's, it, and it goes you know, disproportionately affecting communities of color, but the entire working class is being pushed out. I mean, construction trades workers in here will tell you that they build these shiny buildings and then they drive off miles away be because they can't afford to live here because the rents are sky high. And so there's so much solidarity around the idea of the Amazon tax, you know, going back to 2018. And I'm not sure how many of your uh, viewers know, but at that time, our movement won a unanimous vote on admittedly a small tax. But less than a month later, the Democratic establishment on the city council had overturned it. They repealed the tax. I mean, that, is, that was the single most shameful moment of this uh, establishment here. Uh, but since then, you know, so, so what happened after that on the heels of that victory for Amazon, and that was when Amazon threatened and bullied the city. And that was when the repeal happened. They thought they were coming into 2019 with uh, enormous strength. And they were very confident that they were going to uh, defeat our re-election campaign, our re-election to uh, re-elect a socialist. And that was our second re-election campaign. And they poured in millions of dollars, all kinds of attack ads with all kinds of racist and sexist tropes, lies, misinformation. And yet, despite all of that, our movement was able to win, re-elect re this a socialist city council seat. It really shows how much people are fired up for a real change. And so, uh, you know, fast forward to the uh, George Floyd protests. And in the last 10 days, the, uh, we, you know, we, have, we, have, uh, we are attempting to get the tax Amazon in the Amazon tax uh, proposal in on the ballot so voters can directly vote on it in November if the city council betrays us yet again. But what's incredible is in the last 10 days during the George Floyd protest, this uh, campaign for the ballot signatures has gained 12,000 signatures. And they're, you know, it's still going strong. Uh, people are out there collecting signatures, which really shows that people are uh, deriving this clarity that uh, the only way we can push forward for a uh, society free of racism is also to fight on these demands and that they are not separate, that the demand to tax Amazon is very much a uh, demand to uh, put, you know, uh, really defeat, begin to defeat uh, the gentrification in our city, to really have a measure against the escalating homelessness. And, you know, I just want, would like to end this point on, on the reference that Anna made, which is that, you know, we there's a long an ugly history of the use of police forces and different paramilitary forces, private secure, so-called private security forces, not only against protest movements, not only against communities of color, but there's a long history of these forces. This is, you know, this is the police state under capitalism of them being used against labor struggles, against struggles for economic justice. And so, it is so crucial that those those uh, those connections are being made in people's minds, and uh, I think that I don't I don't think that there's ever a straightforward way for movements. You know, movements will have ebbs and flows. Movements will have to learn lessons. Uh, but I think the Occupy movement did provide a real lesson for many people in the movement that the police are not your friends. The police state is not on your side. We have to build independently, and we have to really bring in the message of working class unity because that's the only basis on which we will have economic and racial justice. Shama Sawant, 
thank you so much for joining us. Really, really appreciate you and uh, and your work and, and everything else. Um, stay strong, stay safe. Thank you so much. And you all stay safe as well. Thank you.